Welcome back to Passionate World Talk Radio. Educate, enlighten, entertain. And this afternoon on Cool Your Heels with Lillian, we have two special guests, Christine Klein and her mom, Helene. And they together have written a book called The Germ Book or Anna and the Germ Who Came to Visit. So ladies, good afternoon and welcome to Cool Your Heels. Thank you, Lillian. It's Thank nice you. You're very much welcome. So you collaborated on writing a book. Who came up with the idea first or did you collaborate on both coming up in the same idea at the same time? Well, I have a, a two-year-old little girl and um, we couldn't figure out how we were going to talk to her about what's happening in the world. And she's becoming more and more aware every day. She's now saying that her doll is sick. So it came out of a need that I had and, and also knowing my friends and family are dealing with the same thing, trying to figure out how they're going to talk to their little ones. And so because this didn't exist, I said, okay, I've got to write a children's book so they can learn that and immediately called my mom and um, and talked to her about the idea and said, I, I want this to be therapeutic. I, I know that she's an amazing therapist and great with kids. And so I have those elements in the book and we just kind of ran off with it all in one day. I mean, it was just boom, boom, boom. It, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. And we took off together. When she Absolutely. And she also did all the illustrations too. So not only is she an amazing therapist, she's also an amazing artist, which I was lucky enough to grow up with. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. That makes life really good. I know how that goes. I have a world-renowned graphic artist in the family who was born with a piece of paper in one hand and an ink brush, a paint brush and a pencil in the other. And he's been doing it, you know, since he was born. So I understand yeah. those things. It's a big gift. <laughs> it is. And it's something that you should always use. And you, so how did you write the book? Did you write the book as a, as a narrator or did you put it in poetry form? Um, kids speak. It's very much geared towards kids. So it speak. We never use the words uh, quarantine. We never use the word virus. Um, and even the title itself is meant to be finite. It's Anna and the Germ to visit. It's not here permanently. Um, and mom was really instrumental in all of that and bringing it down to not just kids level, but all the specific words that, that help from a therapeutic standpoint. It's told in a, in a, in story form, starting out with once upon a time, you know, there was a little girl named Anna and it, and it goes through Anna's life and her experience of being at home during the pandemic and talks about her feelings and her her anxiety and her fear and her sadness and her losses and goes through tools and it shows the parent interacting, the parents interacting with her. So how she copes with things, normalizing her feelings and validating her feelings and then reassuring her and encouraging her. And of course, there is a happy ending with the rainbow and the whole bit where the pandemic is over and everybody gets to return to normal. But it, it, my daughter did an excellent job in really coming up with some of the ideas initially. And I just threw in all of the more therapeutic kind of components so that parents that don't have this type of a tool can use this as a way to open the conversation with their children and the children immediately can relate. It's like my daughter said, even her two-year-old looks at the little yeah in the book and she can go baby sad baby's happy baby's mad and i had a four-year-old uh client who was able to really relate to anna in the book and what was going on with him but it also really can help children that are even older school yes. age children elementary school age children i think they'll all benefit from it and it really helps the parents because they really don't know just what to say this little four-year-old referred to it as the virus. He can't go out and play with his friends because of a virus. Didn't have any clue as to what that meant or really what it was about. So. And that's actually been really fascinating to me too, is seeing how everyone takes, reads the story and takes what they need from it. Um, my mom mentioning other older kids too. There was a seven-year-old who also read it and insisted on doing a review for it because she <laughs> gave us in star. Uh, but one of the things that she said, she used the word quarantine. 
to an older kid, which I was still surprised that she was using that word. And spoiler alert, she said the favorite part of the book was when the mayor said that the quarantine was lifted and that the kids could go back to school. And again, we never use that word at all throughout the story. So the, these kids a, a, of all ages are picking up bits and pieces and applying it to their own life and taking what they need to get out of it's it's been fascinating and and really amazing to see that and it, it was really cute her 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 review was i give it seven billion stars yeah five billion we don't want to go too far five billion <laughs> sorry about that it was just it was so cute because she really really enjoyed it. it they really can relate they can really understand they see their lives and children project themselves in their play and in what they read so they can really relate to their life as they're looking at little Anna and the things that she's going through in the book. So what are some of the therapeutic steps or exercises that you provide for parents at least so that they, as I used to say, chill out so they don't get into panic mold because that's what they're fighting is that flight and fight syndrome that's been with us since we came down from the trees. Well, that's true. So it depends if you're talking about for children or for adults, because in the book, there's some specific things and most of the parents and the children will see sta stage by stage how they go through without specifically identifying them. But the most important thing for parents is to maintain a sense of safety for their children to be able to control their own anxiety, their own frustration, fear, and sadness, anger, loneliness, boredom, because children are emotional sponges. They will absorb that from, from the parent and they don't have the verbal ability or the cognitive ability to be able to put it together. So they typically will act out the anxiety that they pick up and they, you may see it in more regressive behaviors. So it's important that parents know that and they really need to provide for each of the children's, obviously, their physical needs so they get appropriate sleep, good nutrition, exercise wherever they can. They maintain their routines and their schedules as much as, as, much as possible, that they continue to allow them to contact their loved ones virtually. They're going to miss their friends, their teachers, their grandparents, neighbors, little, their little friends in the neighborhood, to ask the children also you know, what they know about it. Like my daughter was mentioning, they talk about the pandemic or this little four-year-old and the virus. What do they know? Talk to them openly and honestly, but at an age-appropriate level. Validate, validate, validate their feelings. If they're feeling scared, acknowledge that, normalize, reassure them, encourage them. Model behavior, show them how to wash their hands, if you have to wear the mask, to help them talk about their feelings give them lots and lots of affection, physical affection, reassurance, positive reinforcement, and special one-on-one -on -one time with each of those children. Those things as a parent, if you can provide those things for your child, they will, they will do really well. Kids are resilient. They are. I mean, my six-year-old, the two things he's gotten out of this is he loves being homeschooled and he misses visiting his grandmother and he doesn't like yeah. the virus it, because of that. So... so it makes it difficult for him. But outside of that, he's he's doing very well at six. But then he has his older sisters who spend sure. their time doing their work, but then they uh, put themselves in their bedrooms and read for the rest of the day, which is normal. They should be right. reading. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's normal. They're weathering it pretty well, but I can, and my, my son is exhausted. He goes to bed at the, at like the same time the kids do, which is eight o'clock. Right. Well, that's something that I've seen is a lot of parents are just so frustrated and exhausted because they're home 24 seven. The kids aren't at school, so they've got to be the teacher. They've got to be the parent, the disciplinarian and provide for them and reassure them and deal with their own emotions. And there's a lot of grieving. It's not just a frustration and the fear and the anxiety, but there's a lot of grief of loss of our sense of freedom, loss of the connection to grandparents, friends. There's a lot of that going on. And so it's really important to understand that these feelings are normal for everyone going through this right now. And I just want to encourage and reassure and reinforce them. This is temporary. There will be a light at the end of the tunnel eventually. Just don't know when. That's the confusing part. 
And also, I would I would also say this too. I mean, a lot of the tips that uh, and the information my mom just gave that's all on a page of our website, thegermbook.com. We have additional resources. They're all free on there. We've got uh, coloring book pages that allow kids to talk about their own feelings in the way that Anna was. How are you feeling today? So they can print those out and color. We also have a. a adorable song that was inspired by the book called go away um and it's it's yeah. it's just, it'll get in your head so just keep that in mind um there's the 20 second version that's exactly 20 seconds too so that kids can wash their hands to it yeah. and hum along with it and sing it so they know exactly how long they need to do it and and we wanted to have those additional resources because Kids are all different. You know, some kids really associate with music. Some love reading. Some love the pictures in the book. Some love art. Some, you know, get, get information directly from their parents. So whatever type of child you have, those resources are there and they're available to be used and start a, a further conversation. That's true. And, and what Christiane was saying is I have printed up how to stay mentally healthy while staying at home quarantine during the pandemic for parents for them specifically for adults sure. and helping children cope through the pandemic or the stay at home thing. So how to help children. So there's two separate uh, sections there that have been written for, for uh, free, again, free additional resources along with the, the song and the coloring book pages that I drew. <laughs> you might want to consider ladies writing a second book, getting back to normal because I think that is going to be a really big emotional yeah. deal for the kids K through sixth grade, because I really think they're going to have a lot more trouble going to back to what they were doing than the older kids who have assimilated it and have taken it in stride. Well, and, but there's, you know, they did a deep research during the SARS epidemic, and they said that about 10 to 29 percent of those that were quarantined during SARS had symptoms of PTSD, which is post traumatic yes. stress disorder. Yes. Yes. So I yes. think that there may be yes. a lot of adults and adolescents and children that are experiencing that. I yes. think children are more resilient. If the parents and the older children are doing well, they will do better because they're their model and they look to them for reassurance and support. So yeah. that's an interesting thought. I do it. It's just such a crapshoot right now as to exactly how to go about doing that. But yeah, yeah. And what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I was, we'll think about that though. <laughs> I was brought up during the polio epidemic in the 50s. Oh yeah. And the first vaccinations that came out were given to kids and they were given in sugar cubes. They put the serum right into the sugar cube mm -hmm. and they gave it to the kids to take. But there were still a lot of kids who didn't get it in time or even got it, but they still were afflicted with polio. Right. And I think that if there had been a book or something, really, from a kid's perspective of how it was affecting them and what it was doing to them in terms of their personal life and also with their interactions and relationships with their teachers because in those days, student teachers were a lot closer in some respects. Right. In the educational uh, public schools mm -hmm. that you may not see today, but so you're also breaking up something like that, which is precious. And we didn't have technology of course because at that time computers took up three football fields right exactly <laughs> <laughs> so we've come a long way in our technology but i really think that there are a lot of kids who had their successful personal life at school in the grades and low grades suddenly snatched away from them Right. And now exactly. all of a sudden they're going to be put back into a classroom with a teacher and all their peers. And you'll, you'll be quickly uh, picked out for the ones who didn't keep up or didn't do the work or something like that. So it's going to be a lot of fear and stress for these kids all of a sudden to have to handle. Plus putting on a brave face when you're going home to mom and dad. Well, and Lillian, too, I mean, going along that vein, we really don't know what this is going to look like. You know, they, they're talking about potentially having rolling situations where yes. we could have waves of this. And it's it's the getting back, but also the, the fear and 
unknown of, is this going to happen again? Am I going to be right out of school again after I go back and, and, and back with my friends for a month? or two months, or three months. So it's that too. And um, and again, spoiler, at the end of their book, that's why it was really important, not just give a lesson of hope, but a lesson of resilience. So the kids know, and, and at the end of the story, they the germ goes away, but they know that if it ever comes back, they've already been through it once, and they'll be able to get through it together. And so it's, it's this resilient message of, of hope, and also, we can do this. We've been here. We can do it again. Correct. That was. I think that was really, really important to to show that what they've learned. I think if we can come yes. out with something that could be really difficult and a tragedy, but there's lessons that have learned that will help us in the future, then that really again builds the resiliency that my my daughter just mentioned. And it is, it does talk about that. We've learned how much fun it is to be at home with our family. We've learned exactly what we need to do if a germ shows up again. I mean, it's it's really hopeful. And even the adults like it because it kind of gives them hope too, to, to look at it in this more childlike format. But it's what we all want. We all want to see that. Okay. We all want to hang on to the learning that we're getting from this. Terrific. So ladies, tell everybody, where you can find the book, where you can buy it, where they can find you, how they can contact you if they have any questions, all of the above. Absolutely. Um, you can get the book. Um, links to the book are at thegermbook.com. That's thegermbook.com. It's available on Amazon in both print and ebook form. And so for folks that, that are at home, the ebook form exactly like the regular book it, um, so you can have it on your iPad my daughter watch it look goes as my mother mentioned on her iPad and looks at the pictures in there as well and all those additional resources are on our website thegermbook.com mm -hmm. terrific and mom do you sell any art in addition to being a therapist or is that a side job no 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 this was <laughs> first attempt at doing illustrations I want to let you know that. I mean, I, I love art. I just don't have the, the luxury of being able to do the things and things that I do. But this is the first time I ever did anything like this that was more geared towards children. So I mm -hmm. wanted it to look like it was something that a child would do and the child's children could really relate to it. But it was fun to do, but <laughs> it was surprising we were able to get it all together and had so many people on board. My, my daughter's fiance was phenomenal in his help because he works for advertising and his brother, like she said, wrote the song and it's, it's darling. I mean, everybody, there's so many people that were inspired that came together as a team to work on this. And it, I, it was a very large village. <laughs> yes, it was a village. It was a loving, inspired, caring yes. village. A family affair. It, well, yes, it was actually yes <laughs> yes and fam family and friends yes that's terrific well ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for listening to chill your hills with lillian colwell and her two guests helene and christine klein and you can see this video all over again on youtube.com forward slash pwr network llc Twitter.com forward slash PWR Network LLC, Facebook.com forward slash Lillian Caldwell 35, surprised you. And on our website at https colon forward slash forward slash passionate world radio. Oh, I see passionate world talk radio.com. Scroll down on the right hand side of the page, you'll see cool your heels, click on it, and it'll take you to the web page. And before you go away and stray, Mark Rutherford had this to say in 1910, the former 20th century, many people would be much better if they would let themselves be as good as they really are. They seem to take delight in making themselves less. Thank you all very much for listening. Please join us next time. And until we see each other again, stay healthy.